Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. When it comes to a narcissist, more often than not, a narcissist accusations are their confessions when we listen closely enough to what they are saying to us. So this video is going to be about just that, the narcissist accusations and their confessions. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support with the channel. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with in your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you overcome narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. When it comes to a narcissist, one of their tactics is projection, where they're going to project their character, their intentions, their behaviour, their shadow side over to you. They're going to scapegoat somebody or blame somebody else. A narcissist projection is often a mixture of their gaslighting because they're trying to distract you from your true reality. They're trying to get you to think in a way that suits them. They are conditioning you to listen to them. And if they cannot condition you to control how you think, they're going to go all out to gaslight you, to confuse you. So it's a projection is a mixture of their gaslighting and it is also their blame shifting, that gaslighting and blame shifting comes together to cause that projection because they are going on the defensive by passing the blame over to you, passing their behaviour, their intentions over to you, shifting the blame on to you while gaslighting you so that they can escape any form of consequences for the things that they do to you. They're also baiting you with projection because they are getting you to go on the defensive. They're getting you to justify, defend and explain yourself to them. So in one way, a narcissist projection is a mixture of their gaslighting, their blame shifting and their baiting to defend themselves. It is a self-defence mechanism and to get you to react to them, to distract you from what's truly happening. So here's a few examples of a narcissist projection. Now when it comes to life itself and dealing with people, we are never responsible for another person's actions, behaviour, feelings if we haven't intentionally done something to hurt them or words. However, we are responsible for our communication and our emotions. When it comes to a narcissist that you may suspect is cheating on you and a narcissist can cheat you out of many things, I shall link this video up here. Narcissists don't just cheat on you with another person, they can cheat you out of your finances, they can cheat you out of your friends and family, they can cheat you out of your happiness, they cheat you out of so many things. And whenever you go to discuss this with a narcissist, because if you were to do something that would upset another person, you would hope they would come and discuss it with you so that you can communicate and work together. When you go to discuss it with a narcissist, they're going to jump straight on the defensive and say, you don't trust me, which is a confession. You, you don't trust them because they're an untrustworthy person. And more often than not, because they themselves are an untrustworthy person, they don't trust other people. Relationships, healthy relationships, one of the fundamental basic needs for a healthy relationship to develop and grow is trust. Because narcissistic people tend to not trust in others, 
yet they put on a front so people trust within the narcissist. So when something happens in reality that breaks that belief, breaks that trust, you go and approach them and they claim that you don't trust them. They're not willing to communicate the issue at hand. Therefore, the issue is never going to get dealt with and the issue is going to keep coming up. What we have to recognise is, no, we don't trust them. Therefore, we don't really want to be in a relationship with them. Or if it's a parent or a friend, we need to slowly distance our emotional connection from them so that they can no longer pull at us. We need to learn our values, our beliefs, raise our standards and stick to our boundaries around them because they are an untrustworthy person. We need to listen to what our emotions are telling us and not what they're telling us to get us on the defensive because they say we don't trust them. We jump on the defensive saying we, we do trust you, it's just this happened and we have to stop and think, no this happened so we don't trust them and they're not going to communicate with us because they're trying to hide something. Listen to those feelings, listen to those instincts. Again, when you go to discuss things with them, narcissists are very good at baiting people into gaining those reactions so that they can blame people for their reactions to escape responsibility for their behaviour. And they will bait people into feeling jealous or they will bait people into being insecure. Narcissists are incredibly envious people. It's one of the criteria of the diagnostics to be on the narcissist disorder spectrum. However, people with high levels of narcissism can be envious of other people. So when they accuse you of being jealous of them, it is usually a confession that a narcissist is jealous of you. Therefore, they're going to provoke those feelings of jealousy within you to pull you down, to make you feel bad, to make themselves feel better that they are envious of others. And as they believe others are envious of them, they usually pull this into their reality. Whether it's true or not, they usually create scenarios to create that jealousy within other people. Why they exaggerate, the narcissist will go all out to make up achievements, make up places they've been or exaggerate to cause that envy within other people and they will then accuse other people of being envious of them when a narcissist exaggerates and does things because they are envious of others they have to pull the people down because they are envious of others a narcissist will find your biggest vulnerabilities your insecurities and they will chip away at those insecurities when you go to discuss your feelings with them because of their behavior their words their actions when you go to discuss your feelings with them they're going to accuse you of being insecure when a narcissist is more often than not a very insecure person why they seek to control, to gain that certainty within their lives, they seek to control those around them. And also by causing that insecurity within those around them creates that dependency. So people become dependent on the narcissist, making that person less likely to abandon the narcissist because narcissistic people, more often than not, a fear abandonment. So when they accuse people of being insecure, it's usually because the narcissist themselves is insecure and has set the environment to set off your insecurities. We have to listen to them. We have to start to think, yes, I do feel insecure around this person. Therefore, this person is not the kind of person I want to be around. Yes, this person does create feelings of jealousy within me. What are these feelings telling me they're telling me that i would like something in my life then i'm not going to be able to achieve it with this person because this person is always going to create that jealousy within me therefore i need to safely step away from this person and find people who don't want to provoke those feelings within me our emotions are telling us to either change our communication change our 
approach change our meaning and often within the dynamics of a narcissistic relationship with our emotions we change the meaning which can unfortunately keep us trapped within that relationship we need to change the meaning into something that works for us and not against us when a narcissist comes at you claiming that you're being awkward you're being stubborn you're bitter a narcissist is usually an extremely awkward person they want that certainty they crave that certainty they want everything their own way when they don't get things their own way they throw major tantrums either they rage out of nowhere at you or they will fall silent on you and they accuse you of being awkward usually because you've said no to them when in reality the narcissist is the one that's being awkward but because you're not doing as they say they're going to accuse you of being the awkward one to get you to question yourself doubt yourself change your mind and conform to their demands they are conditioning you with their words we have to remember our intentions behind our behavior if by saying yes to them are we saying no to our values are we saying no to our belief system if we are then we need to be awkward and we need to respect that they find us awkward and leave them to it not change who we are to suit them as we shouldn't expect them to change who they are to suit us we need that radical acceptance of who they are as a person it's very difficult because they do sell you an illusion of who they are so you get that identity you identify with them as a person usually very like-minded to yourself because they've mirrored you and sold who you are to you so when that side of them comes out that you don't recognize it's very easy to rationalize it away and excuse that oh, they're tired they've had a long day they're stressed because we know ourselves that people can have long days people can be tired people can be stressed with a narcissist it's a repeat pattern of behavior a complete lack of communication, a lot of accusations, a lot of gaslighting, blame shifting, projection, baiting, and there's rarely any closure to any disagreements. A narcissist will often accuse you of being crazy or needing a mental evaluation. Many of us can have moments in our lives where we are a little bit crazy. Most of us can admit to points in our lives when we've acted a little crazy or a little out of character. And usually if we've affected somebody else, we apologise to that person and change our behaviour. With a narcissist, they believe they are above others. They have that grandiosity so they don't see themselves as a problem they don't think they need any help they think those around them need the help so the fact that they're accusing you of needing a mental evaluation usually means they themselves need professional help and support narcissists are very good at playing the victim and yes they do need help and support however their friends their family their loved ones cannot help and support them because you more you forgive a narcissist the more you help and support a narcissist the more they believe they can get away with their behavior and the worse their behavior gets sometimes you have to let them be wrong and walk away from them and let life educate them professionals are trying to figure out a way to help them but as the disorder is that complex as they don't see themselves as the problem as they don't see any wrongdoing in their behavior it's very difficult for them to change their behavior because they believe those around them should be the one to change and often those around them are the ones to change until they lose themselves and find themselves googling how somebody's treating them coming across narcissism and then joining the dots backwards it's like a dot to dot but a backwards puzzle as you work out what you've been through when a narcissist accuses you of causing arguments you can back off 
for fear of causing an argument because you don't want to argue with those you care about when it's often the narcissist behaviour that are causing conversations that the narcissist doesn't want to discuss. Therefore, they're going to accuse you of causing an argument to distract you from the conversation, from the things that they don't want to talk about. And if you keep going at the subject, they're going to cause an argument and then blame you for the argument. So you're the one left feeling bad and nothing ever gets resolved with them. What we have to recognise is if you can't resolve basic issues with someone, you don't want to be around that someone. The victim, the vulnerable, the fragile narcissist, when they come at you with, you're never there for me, you always blame me, oh, I knew everything would be my fault. You know what I'm like, yes, we do know what they're like, but unfortunately their gaslighting distracts us from their true character. Their future faking, their mirroring distracts us from their true character. So with their gaslighting, it takes time for us to wake up to the realisation of who they truly are as a person. And when they're accusing you of always blaming them for the things that they have actually done, to you, it's usually projection because they are always blaming you for the things that they have done to you. However, they're going to accuse you of the one blaming them so that you feel remorseful, you feel ashamed, you feel guilty. They are always going to play on your compassion to guilt trip you into accepting behaviour you should never have accepted. There are plenty of phrases narcissistic people use to shift the blame over to you. There are plenty of phrases narcissistic people use that are actually confessions. Please do add those that you heard into the comments to create kind of glossary of the narcissist blame shifting words because people do like to have a read through the comments and there'll be a glossary of the narcissist confessions that you've heard. I am currently full for one-to-one -one coaching. I have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is in the description. I shall also add in the description the video on the difference between a narcissist accusations and our accusations as often the behaviour is similar, it's the intentions that are very different. Thank you very much for listening. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.